Today I will be demonstrating a ammonia gas generating apparatus that can be used to create a saturated solution of ammonium hydroxide. This will be an important reactant in some of my upcoming videos and I wanted to synthesize it myself. However, I would recommend not repeating this experiment because ammonia is a highly irritating and noxious gas and extended exposure can have irreversible and adverse health effects. With that said, here's the equipment I used in the experiment. I used my distillation column as a makeshift refluxing condenser. I used my gas washing bottle to collect the ammonia gas in solution. I used some tubing to help transport the ammonia from the reaction flask, a vacuum adapter piece, and a 500 milliliter flask. I used ammonium sulfate, sodium hydroxide, and then my large beaker in the back. First, I needed to weigh out the reactants. Earlier this week, I made some crude ammonium sulfate by reacting ammonia cleaning solution and sulfuric acid drain cleaner. Purity isn't a huge issue in this reaction though, and some impurities won't affect the end product. In total, I had 93.15 grams of ammonium sulfate. After weighing, I added the ammonium sulfate to the beaker and determined stoichiometrically that I would need about 56.4 grams of sodium hydroxide based on the following equation. The products of the reaction are ammonia gas, water, and sodium sulfate. Once the ammonium sulfate was added to the reaction flask, I needed to weigh out my sodium hydroxide. The sodium hydroxide was then added to the reaction flask as well, and the reactants were swirled in the flask to achieve a more homogeneous mixture which allowed them to react quicker. If you're wondering why the reaction hasn't started yet, even though the reactants are mixed, this is because the reaction requires an increased temperature to reach its activation energy, and once we heat it, it'll begin to effervesce ammonia immediately. Next you'll see a quick time lapse of the assembly of the entire apparatus. All of the joints that were glass to glass were rubbed with a wet paper towel to ensure that they got a good seal. And joints where the tubing was attached had Teflon tape wrapped around them to ensure that the fitting was nice and tight and no ammonia gas could escape. Once everything was connected, water was attached to the refluxing condenser and ice water was added to the large beaker to help the ammonia gas dissolve into solution. This is the finished apparatus you see here. I added about 80 milliliters of water to the gas washing bottle on the right and I turned the hot plate on low. By monitoring the temperature I maintained a nearly constant rate of bubbling and here you can see the ammonia being produced. In the end, there will be about 24 grams of this gas that are released into the solution. Throughout the entire experiment, I only encountered one issue. I didn't account for the about 12% density change that the ammonia solution would have relative to the water that I added initially. So the volume of the solution inside the gas washing bottle began to increase and almost bubbled into the ice water bath. To remedy this, I used a large graduated cylinder which could accommodate the increased volume. I also added some stir rods and a test tube to the graduated cylinder to displace the water so that the gas um, tube could sit more deeply in the solution. In the end, this hiccup was no big deal and I collected about 80 milliliters of 35% ammonia solution. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe.